So what I'd like to just have a bit of an idea here. How many people here actually would like to start their own business? Okay, there's quite a few of you. How many people here have actually started their own business and sold it? Okay. Very good. See, there's already some fantastic entrepreneurs in the group. Um, so I'd just like to, um, I've actually, I've got to forgive, sorry, what's your name again? Jenny. Jenny, would you mind just getting up for a second and just kind of, um, I really want people to understand how powerful it is. When you're in the room like this and you have people like us standing here in front of you, what it can actually do for you as an individual, how it inspires you to take your passion and your dream and to make it something. So just share the story, if you wouldn't mind, with me that uh, you told me earlier. Um, I heard Warren speak in 2011 at Top Floor, which is a trade show in London, and he talked about subscription commerce. And at the time, I was living out in India, so I went back to my like, sort of boyfriend and, and a couple of interns that were working for us. It's like, subscription commerce, this guy Warren said it was going to be big. So we launched our, uh, a subscription commerce business out in Delhi, which we sold last year. Thank you very much. So I just, it's so important from a knowledge-based perspective that you guys really understand the time that we, uh, you know, have taken throughout the 25 years I've been in business now and to be able to come here and to share a piece of that with you, how when you take it and you actually take action with that, what it can mean to you and your business. Now, building on that type of success is something that is very powerful. So I'd probably say about 70 or 80% of you put your hands up um, saying that you want to build your own business. Now, I've built businesses, I've lost businesses, I've put a lot of money into companies, I've lost a lot of money, I've gained a lot of money. But the one thing that stayed static throughout all of that process has been me. It's been building brand me. Everything that I do, I've built on that success. So I started my own um, business at the age of 22 with a grant from Prince U Business Trust. Um, I then went on to go and work with um, Disney, where I sold a million dollars of sales of products in a single month. I've now you know, become digital marketing. I've co-founded a couple of companies, got investment into those businesses. I'm telling a story around my authenticity of what I've achieved. Now, I could go a little bit further back, which, um, how many people here were on that call earlier on, the last week? How many people were on the call? Okay, there's a few of you. Anyway, so I shared that um, I used to be a professional hip-hop dancer. Um, and that's something that I was when I was 19 years old. Then I went into running my own clubs in London. And they're all things that I did before I actually wanted to start a, a real business. Um, but there's, that's the authenticity behind everything that's going on through everything that you do in your life. So listen to Greg about branding. Jessica, take on board what you're saying around PR. It's so key to what you're doing. So I'm going to quickly share with you, this presentation is normally about 45 minutes, so I'm going to have to move through it, and I don't want to upset the, uh, the Q&A towards the end. But, um, you know, so here is just some little bit of information if you want to tweet. I'm not quite sure. I've had different hashtags, different um, Twitter handles for today, but there's one. There's my Twitter handle there, um, at WVR Night, in case uh, you feel like tweeting throughout this process. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen at the moment is really a quick overview um, of the different social networks. Now, the one thing that I want to get that's really important today with you, it's not about being on all of these social networks. It's not understanding how can I use interest, how can I use Twitter, what's the best way to use YouTube, whatever that might be. Is Everything that I shared with you in regards to my journey, I became a professional dancer, I focused on it. I saw a need in the market, I became a club promoter at the age of 21. I got into sales, I wanted to achieve a million dollars of sales in a month. I set goals and focused on those outcomes. I now specialize in digital marketing and social media for the last seven years. I went and modeled myself on other people that are amazing and brilliant and learned from them. So really look at how you can expand your mind and understand how great you are doing what you're doing right now, because that will change in regards to what you're doing. So these different social networks that you're looking at the screen at the moment, are there to help you grow your business, to PR yourself, to market your brand, but understand which one works well for you. I love Twitter, it's 140 characters, I don't really have to put a lot of thought into writing three or 400 words, as I do with my blog and article writing across four or five different, um, different platforms, as I do. I have to put a lot of thought into that, because everybody that reads it, and some of them get 5,000 views, get over 1,000 shares throughout these different social networks, got to put a lot of time into that. But I like Twitter because it just enables me to react, get the message across very succinctly. Find out what works for you. 
Hussain, he's done that. He's found out what works for him. It's YouTube. He's got hundreds of thousands of people that follow him on that because that's his medium. What's your medium? Really think about that. I can share stats with you and information, but find out what works for you. Um, so this is a really interesting graph. Um, this is a, a graph that's been taken from a company called uh, Shareaholic. They've looked at the data that Google's pushed out. Everything shifted over the last year. You had an update last year called Hummingbird. You've got a couple of new updates at the moment. Um, Panda 4.1's just come out. This is the, all of these updates by Google are telling us to be more authentic. They're telling us to talk about our journey, to tell a story online. <clears throat> and what they're saying is that we as individuals need to be connecting with people, even if we're a brand as a business like Apple, or if we're the individual um, like Steve Jobs, we need to be connecting with our audience. And this graph is sharing with you how Google's looking at what we're doing. So as you can see at the top here, engaging in Google+, Facebook shares, um, you know, Facebook total, Facebook likes, Twitter and Pinterest are the most important things that Google is telling us as individuals that we need to be focusing on as a business. Because when you put your business out online, if you're doing all of these things and you're building that communication wheel all around these different social networks, then Google's going to think about your business and bring you up onto the front page of Google. I've got numerous case studies where, that, where that's happened through PRing through social media that allows you to be on the front page. So just um, you can see here the most important ones of what's happening at the moment. Social media is key to a business and the way that it works. So I'm going to talk very briefly about a couple of the different social platforms. Um, but first of all, I just want to touch on how important research is. You know, whenever, you, Jessica, you take on a new client, the research that we do on that individual before you even take that message and go out is probably, what, 40, 50% of the work is just getting that right and all of the research. So when you're thinking about pushing your brand, whether it's you as an individual, whether it's your business, do your research. This is a great tool that I use called, um, called Feedly, which enables me to do my research and have all that information in one place. Once I have all that inform information in one place, then I can go and share it. Um, and anybody heard about Canva here? Who's heard about Canva? Oh, one person. Great. You haven't heard about it. it. Oh, you love it. How, what, why do you love it? Yeah. I'm not a no. Um, but, you know. How many designers in the room? Just let me know. Are there any designers in the room? Okay, there's one. Sorry, you're not going to like me now. This is a fantastic tool for you as a brand. It enables you to take images that they've already designed already, use amazing um, flat fonts, different style of fonting. But the important thing here is that it doesn't cost anything. It enables you to be visually brand consistent because you've got platforms like um, Instagram and Pinterest that have appeared out of nowhere, you know, getting a billion dollars worth of valuation for a business that's only three years old, it's because of the visualization of it all. Canva allows you to log in, look at the images, upload images, put text over those top of those images. But the important part with this product is it enables you to be brand consistent. You know, Jessica mentioned earlier about email marketing. Every time I do my email marketing, I have a specific picture, that's got the image that's always the same, that the font's the same, but the context of what the actual um, uh, final image is, is specific to that particular email campaign. So when somebody receives that email, they know that email's coming from me. It's a visual consistency. Um, so this is uh, all about uh, Pinterest. How many people on Pinterest here? Okay, there's a few people here. Right, I'm just going to run through this very quickly. This is a little cheat inside Pinterest to help you get your brand to your target audience by using Pinterest's algorithm and database. So you're just going to I'm going to have to walk through this very quickly. So this is an image that I use. Um, I run workshops. This is the image that I use for the workshops. I load the image up into Pinterest. Once the image is inside Pinterest, I save it. I then go back to the picture and edit the picture. Now, all the people that follow me inside Pinterest, I can start writing their name under the picture. I can go at Jessica Hugh, at Greg, at Bucks University. I can start writing all of those names. When I've got 20, 30, 40, 50 names inside of that post inside Pinterest, I then click Save. The minute that I save that, Pinterest sees that somebody's been mentioned like Jessica and then automatically emails Jessica to say, Jessica, you've just been named in a post. 
So I've got an email of my business going through to Jessica when I don't have Jessica's email address. Pinterest done it automatically for me. <laughs> then Jessica gets the email, clicks on the image, and then comes over to the page of interest to her. So does everybody understand that process? You're using Pinterest. When Jessica signs up to Pinterest, she uses her email address. You don't have that email address yet, but you want to tell Jessica about what you're doing. So Pinterest got a cute little way of being able to you market yourself. So go into Pinterest, follow 50 people, then go and put that post up and then tell those 50 people about your business. So does everybody understand kind of that process? It's a bit of a cheat, but it does allow you to promote your brand to people. But be careful when you're doing that because it is about education. It's educational content that's key. People want to learn more. If you try and promote yourself, sell, 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 it will not work. Um, so this is a tool that allows you to automate your information out onto Pinterest. <coughs> so instead of actually having to be there day in, day out, and put up the posts to keep the brand consistency. So just from a brand consistency perspective, I recommend doing five tweets a day as a small business, and then one post a day across the other social networks that are important to you as a small business. A lot of other brands are doing tens of messages every single day through Twitter or through some of the other platforms. So being able to schedule information is really key. And I'm going to share with you just in a second in regards to how you can actually just define doing social media in 30 minutes. Um, Twitter, Twitter's got some new changes inside of it. Again, great tool to use. I've got about 16,000 people that follow me in Twitter. The, that reason is because I educate market them. I always push content out that adds, adds value to those individuals. Think about what that means to you and to your business. We were chatting earlier, and what, what was the, um, uh, you said there was the latest article that you did about the tips or something. So, you know, Jessica talking about, you know, how to not think about, yes, it's about thinking about how to use her as a business, but sharing her knowledge with people so that people can take that knowledge and then use it for their own business. How can you educate people? So here is just some information uh, where Twitter's changed. There is a new little uh, feature for Twitter. You can see here that you can actually pin the little tweet to the top. So building on success of who you are or what the business has achieved. Like I said, I've, I've got investment. I've won numerous awards for my tech companies. Um, when those building on success um, moments happen, let people know about it. So when somebody new finds you, this is just about somebody, me saying in the space of three, three days, I had 1,000 shares of just one of my articles. So build on that success, but let people see that's the first thing. So Twitter allows you to pin those picture images to the top. Um, Facebook has that as well, but it only lasts for seven days. So if you're going to use Facebook as a business, you can pin that post to the top. It sits there for seven days. Um, with Twitter, it stays there forever if you want it. Um, this is a tool that I use to get rid of people. So it allows me to clean up my Twitter account. People that haven't got a picture, got a little egg up there, can't be bothered to put a picture of their smiley face up, whatever it might be, or people that are no longer engaging in Twitter anymore. If I'm going to spend my time to push content out, write all these articles, I want to make sure it's hitting the right people. So Manage Flitter allows me to remove hundreds of people all in one go. So it's quick, simple, and easy. It also tells me who is most influential in the people that are following me at the moment. It's got a nice little influence button um, over here. So click on the influence button. Who is the most influential online at the moment? So something that happened to me uh, was about three weeks ago. Um, I wrote an article uh, about Google's analytics. I wrote about seven different types of analytical dashboards you can have for your business. I put it up into a third party um, website called Business to Community. Google picked that article up and then decided to talk about me as a digital marketing expert to 4 million people. So very quickly, I had my Twitter stream blew up, my Google Plus page went crazy, um, I was getting phone calls, emails from people, all because of, I did something about educating, and the brand Google picked it up. So Google loved me, and then I did a keynote presentation over in Romania about two weeks ago, and I wanted to speak at a specific time on a specific day. They said to me, no, that's when Facebook's talking. So I threw my toys out of pram and said, I'm not coming. Um, and uh, so they moved Facebook so that I could do my presentation. So then I was authentic, and I wrote a blog. I said, Facebook hates me, Google loves me. 
So I took what was happening to me in my life and told a story about it around authenticity. So just touching on what Greg and Jessica has been talking about. Um, who's using Hootsuite here? Anyone using Hootsuite? Good. Do you want to come up and have a little chat? <laughs> um, Hootsuite's a great tool to use. I have got something that I'd like to give away to everybody today. This is um, a complimentary seven-day e-course, which just takes you through a step-by-step -step process around um, social media. But do you know the re why the reason that I'm giving this away to everybody today? Who knows the reason why I'm giving this away? Huh? Okay, that's one reason. What's, what's a higher reason? Uh, of course, I love you. <laughs> okay, the reason... Uh, no, 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 I don't talk about me. Um, the reason why I do this is because for lead generation, I want to capture your email address. So I'm giving something of value to you. I understand what your pain point is. And I, I actually wrote this back in about 2009, 2008, actually. Um, and every year I've just been tweaking it. So the strategy, the process, the structure has, is the same. It's the same in business. Whenever I work with companies that are turning over millions of pounds, it's all about what is their go-to-market strategy. I'm sure Eleanor's going to talk a little bit about this later on with the branding. But what is that go-to-market strategy? How are you, uh, you know, implementing your marketing and your sales? Are they all talking to each other? So what I want to do is I want your email address because if you're starting on your journey, I'd love you to come with me. And if you trust me and engage with me and I keep adding value to you, maybe one day you'll either come and want to work with me or for me or actually do a recommendation. Or maybe I can do a recommendation for you because we've built an online relationship. So this is a complimentary seven-day e-course. It didn't start as a, out as a complimentary seven-day e-course. I use Hootsuite. I composed a message. I called it a free seven-day guide. Inside Hootsuite allows me to track how many people clicked on that message. So I have the link which sits at the bottom here, which is where I capture your email address. And um, in that link, Hootsuite shrinks it. So one week I did a free seven day guide, push that out. The next week I did a free seven day e course. I changed the words. What are the words that my audience want to get engaged with me as a brand? The next week I changed it to a complimentary seven day e course. I had twice as many click-throughs and three times as many conversions. So this is why this is now called a complimentary seven-day e-course and not a free seven-day guide. I thought I was being cute and I applied because I run a lot of webinars and uh, I very kindly had Jessica on one of my webinars. Um, if you want to go and have a look at all the webinars that I've done, it's on my Vimeo account, so Warren Knight Vimeo, and you'll be able to see the uh, PR webinar that I did with Jessica. It's fantastic. Um, and, um, and so I, that, then when I realized what the difference was, I now sort of took that word complimentary and started to use that in my webinars. My click rate dropped because I was using the word free. I thought, let me have a play around with this. I decided to test live. Live got me a far better click through and I have hundreds of people and I've literally doubled the amount of people that come into my webinars because I now call it a live webinar. People want real time. What, they want to know what's happening in real time. So complimentary for something like this, live for the webinars. I'm sharing these with you because the keyword understanding and analyze that information will help you grow your business. Understand what that is. Um, so this is our Instagram. Again, a little tool that I use is called Snapseed. It just enables me to make my pictures even better. Hashtags are really key inside Instagram. Instagram is very different to how Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, um, you know, whatever other different social network that you're using. Instagram, you can tell a story just using hashtags, but do it intelligently. So um, this particular tool is called Icono Square, which allows you to visually see your, all of your Instagram posts on your desktop. So you don't need to use Instagram from your smartphone. You can actually do it from your desktop should you wish to. But more importantly, it enables me to track hashtags. So you can see here, I've typed in a hashtag at the top, um, which is called homewares. And then it's given me all of these other examples of how people are explaining inside Instagram that same type of image. What other hashtags are they using? When we have this knowledge, we know how to market our business and PR our business focused on our target audience. Because these are the hashtags that our target audience is using. This is a tool that allows you to schedule your information out onto Instagram. 
So again, saving time. Same way Viral Woot does, Hootsuite allows you to schedule information to Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and LinkedIn. So between these three tools, you can schedule all of your content as a business out, ultimately saving you time to stay focused on growing the business. Defining your business. So I touched on it earlier around the hashtags. If you have a look at the screen at the moment, you'll be able to see that we've actually defined what it is that we want to say, not the content that goes into that, but how we define it. So the first tweet that you see here, so this is for a global retail brand. Um, the first tweet here is all about a product. The next tweet is all about the blog of the week. The next tweet, we're talking about news about the business. So you can see it touching on authenticity. We're talking about staff members, um, you know, competitions, uh, things that are happening inside of their client's stores. Keeping authentic with the staff. And that's something that we talk about on a regular basis. And then we go through to the other different social networks, again, once a week, or once a day, but what goes out on those days? And then at the bottom, you can see the hashtags. We did our research to find what hashtags are our target customers using. And those hashtags are the ones that we continuously use for the business. We do not step outside of the box of this process when you're sharing your content online. It's a formula to stick to. Once you've got that, then you apply it. So this is one day. So I actually wrote seven days worth of content for this brand. It took me 35 minutes. 35 minutes to do seven days worth of content, of which then I automate using Hootsuite, ViralWoo, and Schedulegram. So when I talk about being able to do social media for 30 minutes a day, spend your time doing your research. Have a formula. You can, um, and I'll happily give all of you these templates. All you're going to do is sort of contact me. If you go to my SlideShare account, Warren Knight SlideShare, I've got dozens of presentations up there that will be able to sort of help you in your journey of your entrepreneurship. KPIs, so key performance indicators. The work that you do, you've got to make sure that it's being rewarded in different ways, whatever those indicators are for you for a business, whether it's more web hits, whether it's getting sales, whether it's lead generation. You have to analyze the work that you do so that when you do spend your time doing it, it converts in the best way possible for you to grow what it is that you're doing in your business. So I have all these templates. I'll happily share them with you. Um, this is a 90-day marketing plan. I never do more than 90 days. Whilst I did get investment in my business, and yes, I had to design a three-year cash flow forecast. It's forecasting what, what might or might not happen within the business. You have to do these things from a forecast perspective and design business plans. But when you're actually looking at the business, you've got to do it as much as you can in real time. So I never do more than 90 days. And within those 90 days, then it gets broken down as granular as a seven day plan. So again, I can share these with you. Um, I've got a dashboard that I can give to everybody as well if they want to understand what traffic's being driven because of social media. So again, I know where my traffic comes from. So if you look at the top up here, which of the three social networks convert best for me coming over to my website for me to get new customers and get leads? The analytics is clearly telling me where I should spend my time. Not where I emotionally think I should be, but analyzing that data gives me the answers to stay focused on what's important to growing the business. Um, so just to recap, really, do your preparation, get everything in place for you to be able to spend time focusing, working on the business from a social media and digital marketing perspective. Um, think about each platform in a native way. Don't try and use Twitter the way that you would be using Instagram. It will not work. And as quick as you gain your customers, those online potential customers, they will leave your business. Um, so just lastly, I have a book coming out uh, in January. Um, the book's called Think Digital First. Um, everything that I've shared with you very quickly but I touched on some of the actual go-to-market strategies. I've got live case studies inside of the book as well. Um, a little bit about kind of you know, where I've come from and, and why I've been able to get to the stage of writing the book with building businesses and getting investment and what it means to help you grow your business. So um, that's coming out in January. I would love you know, to be able to share that with you guys. So please feel free to sort of follow me in whatever you want to do um, with what you're doing. And like I said, I've left some down here because we might, might have to leave afterwards. Just please come and grab these. And if you don't get this, just come and tweet me or email me, and I'll happily send it all through to you. So thank you very much for being a great audience. <laughs>